In previous videos, I've asserted that the partition function for a collection of n indistinguishable ideal gas particles has a form which looks something like this, that we have volume to the nth power over number of particles factorial times 2 pi mass of a single particle over Planck's constant squared times inverse temperature beta and all that to the power 3 n over 2. So this might look somewhat vexing to begin with, like where the heck did we get all of this? So we're going to take some steps back and try to understand where these individual pieces come from. So first thing we're going to do is try to understand how we go from a single particle to a collection of n indistinguishable particles in a partition function like this. So if we have some function, let's call it little q, and that'll be a function of volume and temperature because there's only one particle. So this will be the partition function of a single particle. And for now, we're just going to leave the form of Q unspecified. We'll look at that in more detail in a little bit. So if we want to go from this to a system of N particles, my first claim to you is that to do that, we'll take this partition function of a single particle and take that to the nth power. This will be n distinguishable distinguishable non-interacting particles. And remember, ideal gas particles are non-interacting because they don't have any potential energy function between each other. If we were talking about a van der Waals gas or a, some type of virial expansion for a gas, then this uh, would not be true. So why should it be that I take the partition function of an individual particle and take it to the nth power if they're non-interacting and distinguishable, as I say here? And distinguishable just means you know which is which, a.k.a. something like you could label them. So let's think about the form of what the average energy is. Average energy is minus partial derivative of logarithm of partition function with respect to inverse temperature beta. Reminding ourselves that beta is defined as 1 over Boltzmann constant times temperature. Okay, so the energy of each particle is not affected by the other particles, and all the particles should have the same average energy. So each particle on average should have the same energy as any other particle over a sufficiently long amount of time, or if you just randomly choose enough particles. So that means that the energy should approximately be proportional to the number of particles. And when we have this partition function here, if you have this factor of to the power of n here, whenever you take the logarithm of that, the logarithm of q of v t to the n, whenever you take a logarithm of that, then we know inside of an argument of a logarithm, if you take it to a power, then you have n log q of vt. So it fits this type of form here. If you have this type of power here, then taking the logarithm gives you this factor of n out in front, and you know that's going to give you this factor of n that you need, so you, that you need for your energy to be proportional to the number of particles. So that's going to satisfy that criterion there. So that's kind of just a general argument for, for why that should be there. You can show this more rigorously if you actually go into the actual form of the partition function and all the Boltzmann factors, but this is a nice kind of off-the-cuff type of uh, logical argument that this factor of to the n should be there. Okay, now I have this caveat again distinguishable. So in real gas particles, we can't distinguish which is which. We don't know which molecule is which. So if we were to put labels like 1 and 2 on our molecules, well, we don't know that this is molecule 1 and that this is molecule 2. This could be molecule 2 and that could be molecule 1. So there are two ways to arrange two molecules there. And if we have three, then we could call them 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 
212, or 321. If we had three particles there, we don't know which is which if we had to label them 1, 2, 3, and there would be six possible ways of labeling them there. So if we generalize this to arbitrarily large numbers of particles, dot, 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 we have n particles here, then there are n factorial ways to arrange them. And essentially what this leads to in our Boltzmann factor is an overcounting of our degrees of freedom here whenever we, whenever we do things this way. So to go from distinguishable particles to indistinguishable particles, what we need to do is divide by this n factorial here to account for this overcounting of our systems here. So our last result that we're going to talk about in this video is we have 1 over n factorial q of vt for a single particle to the n that this is going to be our partition function for n indistinguishable non-interacting particles. Okay, so thus far what have we explained here? We've explained this factor of n here, this factor of n there, because we can say that our q for a single atom or for a single ideal gas particle. Well, we take out this factor of n here. We'd have v times 2 pi m over h squared beta to the 3 halves. And this factor of n factorial here accounts for the fact that these particles are indistinguishable. We don't know which is which if for a real uh, gas for molecules, things of that size. So we've deduced here that our partition function for a single ideal gas particle is going to be volume times 2 pi mass of a particle over Planck's constant squared times beta to the power of 3 halves. So next we're going to look into how we go about getting uh, this exact form here and what exactly that entails.